you've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the Word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. It is May 24th, 2023. This is a day that the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. You have to get up in the morning making up your mind that you are going to please the Lord today. You are going to soak in His love because when you do that, when you realize how much God loves you, it just makes everything else not as important. Things won't bother you as much because they can't compare to the love of God that He has towards you. So I am going to be jumping around 1st John. The book of 1st John. Not John chapter 1, but 1st John. It's almost at the end of the Bible. But I'm going to jump around a little bit between 1st John 2, 3, and I think I have a little bit of 4 as well. I'm going to read his word and may it work in our hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, that you just let this word instruct us, guide us, correct us where we need correction, Lord. Father, instruct us and comfort us, Lord. Give us strength through your word. Holy Spirit, may we have ears to hear, hearts willing to receive what you want to say to us this morning. Thank you so much, Lord, for your precious word, for Jesus, for your precious Holy Spirit that teaches us and guides us. In Jesus' name, amen. So here we go. This is how John starts this letter. It says, my little children, remember he is older now. It says, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins... We have an advocate with the Father. If you mess up, we do have an advocate with the Father. With the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is a propitiation for our sins. Not for ours only, but also for the whole world. In this walk, there's going to be times when we mess up. But we can cry out to God. Say sorry. And knowing that what Jesus did on Calvary covers all our sins. We may mess up sometimes, but God knows our hearts. He knows that our, if our heart was joyfully sinning or whether it's one of those things that you did it and it's like, why did I do that? Lord, I'm sorry. He is there to forgive us when we do that. This, uh, this one, verse 3 now, in 1 John 2, has this heading. It says, Test of Knowing Him. Now by this we know that we know Him. If we keep His commandments, He who says, I know Him, and does not keep His commandments, and remember, he broke down the commandments to simplicity, loving God with all our heart and loving one another. I mean, it, that's, it's not talking about, oh, you have to eat this and that. It wasn't... It's the commandments that he gave. If we love God, we will love one another. If we love God, we're not going to sin because the fact that we don't want to hurt him or offend him because we love him. When you love someone, you try to live your life in a way that pleases that one. And that's how it should be with the Lord. So that's a test of knowing how do I, much do I love God? Do I live for the world or do I live in a way that pleases my Lord. Remember, it's not our works that gets us to heaven. It's only because of what Jesus did on Calvary. But there is a joy in the journey when you realize how much He loves you and you live your life in a way that's pleasing to Him. It says, but whoever keeps His word, this is verse 5 now of 1 John 2, but whoever keeps His word, truly the love of God is perfected in Him. You know, it's perfected, completed in Him. By this we know that we are in Him. He who says he abides in Him ought himself also to walk just as He walked. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. You, for, I'm sorry. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake. 
Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. And that abides there forever, it's abiding in peace and love and joy in the things that God is preparing for us, things that will last forever. Not temporal things that this world gives that rust and people try to steal, they just get old and de deteriorate, they just, they don't stay. But the things that God gives us, that's totally different. I'm going to skip to verse 18. It says, Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us. They went out from us. They were in the midst of them. But they were not of us. They acted like if they were part of that group, but they really were not of them. For they had for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest that none of them were of us. But you, this is you who believe Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and live your life for him. It says, but you have an anointing from the Holy One and you'll know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. You know, when you hide God's word in your heart and somebody tells you something and it doesn't go with this word, you get that check and says, ah, oh, something there is not right. You know, watching the series Chosen, in the beginning it seemed like it was good, but as the, the events started going, as the, the season started going more, it seemed like they were adding things that just didn't quite go with the word. You know, and Pastor Matt started noticing it, and sure enough, um, it's being supported now by some ungodly groups. So we, we have to hide this word in our heart. We have to know what it says so that we know the truth. It goes in 1 John 3.3 3 now. I'm sorry. Verse 22, who is a liar, but he who did, and I'm still in 1st John 2. Who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. And to me there, acknowledges the Son. That doesn't mean that you just say Jesus is the Son of God. But if you acknowledge Him, if you truly believe who He is, that He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, then you're going to live your life in reverence, in a holy fear, not a fear that makes you hide away, but a fear that says, He's a mighty God. He loves me. I am not going to throw that away. Nothing in this world is worth you losing the salvation that you have through Jesus Christ. It is a gift to you because God's love for you. 1 John 3.3 3 says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what it we sh excuse me revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. I'm going to end in 1 John 4, 9. In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, 
that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also to love one another. Think about today how much God loves you. Let it encourage you. Let it lift you up. Let it, let it just let you look up to the sky and just think, Lord, you're marvelous. If you're in a hospital and you can't, <coughs> excuse me, even look out a window, close your eyes and think of the sounds of birds singing, of the ocean waves. You know, think of sunsets that you've seen, sunrises, beautiful flowers, a butterfly. Think of those things. Think of the blessings of God, the goodness of God, how much He loves you. He is preparing a place for me and you that we can't even begin to imagine. <coughs> this world, ah, it'll be gone. The things here, they don't matter. What matters is our relationship with God. <coughs> Excuse me. So keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. He dearly, dearly 